Hello and welcome back to Learning English Pro. I hope you're having a great day. I recently got a subscriber request from Baron Olang asking for an English vocabulary lesson on hospitals. Thank you, Baron Olang. I am very happy to oblige as this lesson will be a great addition to my playlist on healthcare. I have already published a huge selection of medical and science related videos. They are perfect for any health professional interested in expanding their English vocabulary on medicine, the body, science and much more. Check out the playlist and videos linked on screen and in the description below. So that's enough business. It's time to get started with our English lesson on hospitals. First up, let's take a look at some synonyms for the word hospital. We have medical institution, medical facility, health centre and clinic. Reasons you might go to the hospital include surgery, therapy. You may need to go for testing or an examination. Maybe you need a consultation. A consultation is meeting with an expert, like a specialist medical doctor, in order to seek advice and receive evaluation. If you are a regular patient, you might be going for a checkup. A checkup is an appointment where a disease or illness is monitored. Maybe you are visiting someone in a hospital. In that case, you are called a visitor. Hospitals are divided up into different areas called departments or wards. If you need to find where you're going, you can always ask for help at the help desk or reception. In every ward or department, there will be a nurse's desk where you can seek further information. A lot of people will arrive in hospital because of an emergency. This is a serious, unexpected and often dangerous situation requiring immediate medical action. And if you have a medical emergency, it's very likely that an ambulance will come to collect you and bring you to the hospital. The person on the ambulance team who initially evaluates you and checks your health is called a paramedic. And if it is required, you'll be put on a stretcher. This is a mobile bed that is used to carry patients to and from an ambulance. Next up, you are on your way to the emergency room. This is what is called in America, and sometimes it's abbreviated to E-R. In other countries, it might be referred to as the emergency department or accident and emergency. Short for accident and emergency is A and E. And when you are being treated in the hospital, you are called a patient. If your treatment involves you staying in hospital, you are called an inpatient. And if you stay at home while receiving your treatment, you are an outpatient. And as an outpatient, usually you would come into the hospital by appointment for your treatment. As a newly arrived patient, you will be subject to an assessment or an examination. And this will be done by a doctor. If you want to learn different types of doctor, check out my vocabulary which covers this topic. The link is on screen and in the description below. A tool which you'll always see a doctor carrying is the stethoscope. This is primarily used to listen to a patient's heartbeat. Doctors are also known for wearing a white coat and it is not unusual for them to be referred to as a white coat. They can often be seen wearing scrubs. These are blue or green pajama-like clothing that is worn for protection or during surgery. And during surgery, a doctor can be seen wearing a surgical gown, a face mask, protective goggles and gloves. A very important employee of the hospital is a nurse. If you'd like to learn more words relating to nursing, check out my video on healthcare vocabulary. Nurses provide care to patients and a big part of their job is managing the patient chart or patient file. Nurses are known for working very hard and doing lots of different tasks, some of which include taking your blood pressure and your body temperature. And more often than not, it will be a nurse who dispenses your medication to you. Synonyms of medication include medicine or drugs. Let's take a moment to look at the different ways medicine is given to you. One method uses a syringe, this is called injection. 
Medication can be taken orally with pills. Medication can also be given with an IV drip. This is short for intravenous drip. Common types of medication include painkillers, antibiotics, antiviral drugs, or steroids. In the hospital, you may receive a prescription from your doctor for medication. This is a signed document which you can bring to the pharmacy and they will provide you with your medication. Next up for our hospital vocabulary, let's look at different types of scans. A scan is a testing method and these include X-ray, along with MRI, which stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. There is also the CT scan. CT stands for Computerized Topography. There is also the ultrasound, which is commonly used during pregnancy. Another common type of test in the hospital is a blood test. Sometimes it'll be referred to as a blood screening. For some conditions, it may be necessary to stay in hospital for a prolonged period. Sometimes this is done for observation or monitoring. Doctors do this to see how you are recovering or how your condition is progressing. If your condition is very serious, you may need to stay in the intensive care unit. And if you are having difficulty breathing, you may be put on oxygen. For some people, staying in hospital involves having surgery. This can be done for diagnosis, for biopsy, or perhaps for removal or repositioning if something is where it shouldn't be. Or perhaps it's to redirect something like blood flow. And of course, we must consider transplants. There are many other reasons for surgery. Can you think of any more? Let me know in the comments. After surgery, it's very common to get bandaging, and this is done, of course, with bandages. These can also be used for things like sprains or small cuts and abrasions. However, if you break or fracture a bone, you may need a plaster cast. This is done to reset the bone. It can simply be referred to as a cast. I got a cast on my broken arm. If you've broken a leg or have difficulty walking, you may need crutches. For someone who needs additional support while walking, they can use a Zimmer frame. This can also be called a walker. If you are unable to walk, you will need a wheelchair. A wheelchair is also commonly used to transport all patients throughout the hospital. A common reason for women to go to hospital is to give birth. This is often done in the maternity or labour ward. Generally in big cities, there will be a maternity hospital. This type of hospital only takes care of women and their babies. Doctors may also keep you in hospital for convalescence. This means for rest and recovery. This is common after a surgery or after suffering from a serious illness or condition. And when you're ready to leave hospital, the doctor and hospital will discharge you. This is the word we use to describe when the hospital or doctor has given official authorization to release you from medical care and to return to your home. And that brings us to the end of this lesson. You are officially discharged from learning any more hospital vocabulary. But if you are in need of more English vocabulary, there's really no better place than Learning English Pro. I have over 160 English vocabulary lessons now on my channel. And whatever your topic of interest, I'm sure you'll find the right vocabulary video for you. And if you don't, let me know what topic you want and I'll make a video for you. Just leave a comment on any video. Coming up on screen are some video suggestions just for you and there's also a link for you to subscribe here. Don't forget to check out the extensive word list in the description. And if you're looking for more interactive learning content, head over to my community tab. That just leaves me to say I hope you have a fantastic day and remember, keep learning English like a pro.